this is just a quick overview. I'm just going to do a couple of videos to show you some of the important things about uh, operating Trinity, uh, just to let you get to know a little bit more about Trinity's personality here and its capabilities. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Modbap Trinity. OK, so what you're hearing is Trinity playing with a melody uh, from Osiris and the drums are being sequenced with the MPC. So I'll stop that just for a second and just to kind of give you an overview of how you operate Trinity. So Trinity has three channels, right? And the highlighted channel, the one with the blue LED is the active channel. What you want to do then, if you're on the active channel and you want to change any of the parameters, you have all of these knobs that are available to you to uh, make that drum sound into anything that you can imagine, right? So it's also a trigger. So those are the trig select buttons. Right now, uh, what we have is selected on the drum types, and this is where we get the drum types from. Right now, the arcade synth is selected. And I love the arcade synth for being able to create incredible claps and um, hi-hats and cymbals and those kinds of things. But it, then it goes way off into its own territory and kind of gets into arcade type sounds when you uh, shape it up that way. So at any rate, if I wanted to, on the selected drum channel, if I wanted to change the, uh, uh, the drum synth model that's being used, I would just hit the type button. Right now, we're on the block synth. I can uh, I can change that to um, heap, the additive synth. I can change that again by hitting type and going to the FM synth. And we can go back to arcade. That's how you select different drum types. If I wanted to select a different channel uh, to tweak, I could do two things. I could either hold the channel button that way. Notice when I do that, it's going to trigger. But if you hold it, it will make that the active channel. If I wanted to select the channel without triggering the sound, I'd use shift and the channel. And again, I can change the drum type or the drum synth algorithm type by hitting the type button. And obviously, uh, all of the drum synth types have different characteristics. So uh, parameters that sound one way on one will not sound the same on the other. But that's to your advantage because it gives you a wider swath of sounds that you can create. So um, uh, say I wanted to tweak uh, this sound just a little bit. How about some basic stuff? I'm going to play this beat. Let's open up the decay on the kick, channel one. I can also pitch that around. Then if we take that a little bit further, just still thinking about the navigation of this whole thing, um, you'll need to know obviously what each one of these things do. So depending on the type of drum, uh, type of drum synth that you have selected, uh, there the, some of these knobs do the same thing across the board, but well, some of them do little different stuff, but they all name the same. You have pitch, you have character, 
you have a uh, sweep, you have time. So that's a pitch envelope so that you could do things like this. Right. And then you have shape, grit and decay. Shape obviously allows you to shape the thing, depending on the model that you have. It, it's uh, either adding in um, maybe giving you some FM options or maybe it's adding in a second oscillator or, you know, just doing some random stuff like that. But at any rate, you're able to shape the sound with shape with grit. That's really adding in noise uh, for either of them. Then you have decay. You have hold. So the interesting thing about hold, obviously, it's it's an operation of the amp envelope, right? So decay allows you to extend the decay or clamp down the decay. But when you start to add in hold, typically it'll give you a little more body to the drum. Um, typically what I like to do because I like the decay to be a little more natural I won't put hold above the level of decay because when you do um, so this is a more natural decay but if I turn hold up above the level of decay it, it's a little bit you see it's a little more abrupt But that could be desired, and at least you know how to do that with that. From there, you have the output matrix. And what the output matrix helps you do, it's just as simple as each channel has its own output. But they're all summed to the mix output. And you have switches associated with each channel at three position switches. Uh, when the light is pink, it's telling it, hey, send that instrument out of the mix output only when it's in the middle that's the all setting the led is white and it's saying hey send that instrument out of both its own output and the mix output when it's blue and it's on the uh, drum x which is one two or three its own output, it's basically saying, remove that signal out of mix and only send it through its own output for this channel, right? And essentially that performs like a mute if you don't have anything connected. But otherwise, if you're on all, you're getting a signal out of the individual and the mix that allows you to do parallel processing and things like that. So how it performs like a mute is because I don't have anything connected to it. So when I play it, I just muted the snare. And the hi hat, now the kick. you can essentially use that um, in a performative nature. So yeah, that's a little bit about the navigation.